from plant pipe workloads, uh, subject to bending only. Uh, actually, this work was mainly done by uh, Rodolfo de Souza, which is not here today. Uh, also, got technology uh, contribution by Zilian Zhang from Trondheim University. Yes, uh, he's not here today. Uh, um, okay, uh, let's first see the uh, introduction and the uh, motivation. Uh, actually, this work was is within a, a very extensive work that we have been doing at the University of São Paulo with the uh, Brazilian steel pipe company in uh, riser installation by by the drilling process. So you can see here, this is a a, a ridge pipe. Yeah. From 12, 12 inch to uh, 18 inch sometimes, and this is uh, welded on shore. It's it's, it's reeled. Uh, it's taken to the uh, to the, uh, the the point point, and then it's unreeled straight, and then finally deployed to the sea uh, the sea bed. Um, um, this is a detail of the uh, of the drilling process. But what's important is in, in this work is that the the the, the, the pipe and in particular the girl felts are subject for very large batch strengths, 2 or 3% during installation. So we want to uh, evaluate what's the impact of the, um, uh, on, on the strength integrity of the pipeline or the riser when um, uh, some, some undetected flaw, uh, some flaws are not detected at the birth um, And this is particularly important when we consider a, a clad line pipe. So uh, in, in many oil fields, um, um, there's a trend, there's a recent trend of using clad pipes. So the inner pipe here is for a corrosion resistant alloy, uh, Inconel uh, 625 or some other nickel chromium alloy. And then you have a clad layer here, um, usually it's 3 millimeter. And, and, and the girl felt has to be done with the same uh, material of the clad. So, so this will then uh, uh, create a, 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 a strong mismatch weld. And in our particular case, we are interested in the uh, undermatch weld. So the, the weld can get its undermatch at the beginning of the loading. And because of difference in the, in the, in the hardening between the, the, the thread layer, the corrosion resistant oil, and the base material is using a, a, a standard pipeline steel at 65, at 70 steel, uh, you, can have from, you can go from undermatch to overmatch over a two, three uh, percent of uh, plastic deformation. Uh, and, and so, what's the impact of these on the uh, uh, fitness for service assessment? Okay, so this is a very, uh, it's a very simple uh, scheme of the, uh, the standard uh, fracture of the side procedure line. Okay, um, so the objective of this work, uh, uh, and again, we have done an extensive uh, work on. on Determination of driving forces and also uh, evaluation procedure for this, for this kind of problem. But here we are interested in evaluating the procedure for the driving force in the girth weld and, and address the, the impact of the, the similar welds in the procedure to evaluate the driving force. So the methodology here is, um, uses the equivalent stress strain relationship. This was proposed by, by, by Lee and Eisworth back in 1997. And the idea is to um, um, obtain an equivalent or homogeneous structure uh, where the uh, stress strain behavior um, can characterize the stress strain behavior or it's equivalent to the stress strain behavior of the, uh, uh, of the mismatch weld. You can see here this is the limit load for the weld, the limit load for the, bed, for the base plate material, sorry. Um, uh, this is the, the stress for the uh, gold metal, the strain for the strains for the old metal, and and the key here is to then to get the, the limit load for the mismatched weld. And this is probably the, 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 the complicated part in the in, in the board, um, and, and that that's the idea of the procedure. So we have here the uh, a, uh, uh, schematic of the weld, of the, the V-proof weld, of the earth weld. So the idea is to. Um, um, arrive at a homogeneous and equivalent structure that we would reproduce the equivalent mechanical behavior of the structure using the uh, equivalent stress frame uh, uh, relationship method. Okay, so that's the framework then. We have the uh, mismatch weld, um, and we, we, we have to uh, obtain an inflow solution, and we can obtain the homogeneous pipe, then we can use the every solution to get the, the driving force for the homogeneous pipe because um, there are some uh, solutions available in the literature for the, uh, uh, the 
driving force, and, and, and that's how we get the CTOD, driving force. So first, we want to see the uh, work group simplification work. There is no uh, clad layer. So we have here a, uh, the weld material, uh, the base material, and the idea is to um, um, uh, transform the, the V groove to a square groove weld. It's much simpler to analyze. And the idea here is to is to get the, uh, the this, this, this width here, which agrees with this lip line pattern at 45 degrees. That's the, 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 base, the base procedure. When, when we have the clad layer, the procedure is a little bit more complex, more complicated, but can be uh, done through a, a, a couple of steps. When you have here the, the, the groove, the clad layer, and then you transform this to a, a square groove, uh, sorry, so a square groove where you have the, the, the equivalent uh, clad layer effect, and finally you get the equivalent um, 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 component where the, 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 the mismatch property is given by this kind of uh, approximation. And this was a procedure that was proposed by the uh, Belgian group at the University of Ghent uh, back in 2014. <laughs> um, um, another key ingredient of the methodology is to get a limit load solution for the uh, GERFA. And this is something that's not very uh, usually is, is not commonly available. Um, um, and here we are using an approximate solution proposed by Kim uh, in 2014, which is um, uh, uh, very close to a, 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 a pipe of a birth, we, uh, sorry, to a circumferential internal crack, suggested uh, pure bench. And this is the EPRI uh, scheme here. Um, uh, essentially, the EPRI, the EPRI is um, uh, once you have um, uh, the, the, the limit bending moment, and you have the bending moment acting on your structure, and you know, assume a, hand, a Rundberg is good uh, material law, and you, you know the Rundberg, the, the, the Rundberg holds the exponent, and you know uh, some properties of your material, and, and if you have this uh, function, which is here should be h uh, sub 2, but you have a h2 function, is tabulated, which is a function of a over t, uh, d over t, uh, the Rundberg is good, and, and theta describes the um, and the crack action, the crack length. And you can easily det determine the CTOD once you have all these. Uh, so that's what we do here. So then we de we determine the CTOD from the equivalent stress strain method with 3D finite element analysis. So uh, this is the kind of uh, finite element analysis we have done using abacus. And we have done his, this for a couple of the, uh, for, for a number of the uh, of, uh, geometries. D over T between 10 and 20. Uh, the length of the crack between 0.04 to 0.2. A over T uh, for very shallow crack to uh, deep crack. And the width of the weld between uh, um, 0.25 to 0.5. And the mismatch from a very extreme undermatch, which our product is not a very realistic, but anyway, uh, we did it. 50% uh, undermatch to 50% um, overmatch, okay? Um, and first we are comparing here the, um, the assumption of using a, a, a let's say, a simplified limit load solution uh, compared to finite limit analysis. So we can see here that uh, apart from very uh, severe undermatch, which again is not realistic for all uh, geometries. Uh, you see here that the uh, uh, Kim solution agrees very well with the 119 line, which is the finite element analysis. So the same for um, um, uh, here different kinds of uh, 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 overmatch here, okay. Okay, and another thing is also we analyze the um, uh, two kinds of uh, weld proof. So uh, a wide uh, roof, it's uh, 16 degrees, and a narrow roof, it's 20 degrees. Again, with different uh, mismatch ratios. Um, uh, in doing the uh, simplification, then we want to analyze what's the effect of the uh, mismatch level on the uh, approximation between the V groove and the square groove. Because it's so, again, it's always much easier to analyze a square groove welding and, and not thinking about, not worrying about 
what's its geometry, the angle, and, and so on. So we can see here that apart again for the very extreme undermatch conditions, which is not realistic, so we can see here that approximation of a square roof is, is actually very good, uh, up to 50% overmatch. And the same for, um, this is for with no clad layer, so it's a homogeneous plant, with a clad layer. You can see here the clad does introduce some perturbation here, but it's still very good, even for a 3 millimeter clad layer. Uh, and the same for the um, um, uh, uh, white group again, the same, and also uh, some deviation here for external overmatch. Okay, um, um, and the rationale for using this view pattern is 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 this here, is this here. You can see here with no clad layer, where's the intersection of the, uh, the, the view pattern for 20% uh, undermatch and 50% overmatch. Sorry, 50% uh, undermatch. Again, uh, with the three millimeter clad layer. So actually, the three millimeter clad layer uh, does not change too much the uh, mechanical behavior of the uh, and, and, and also the. Uh, these are the uh, every uh, H2 factor. So again, we did a very extensive finite element calculation. This is a published in engineering fracture mechanics uh, a couple months ago. And, and you calculate these in a very nice uh, polynomial function so the user can handle this very easily. So we did a, a we did a, uh, let's say the, uh, the dirt work and then the user can just use the polynomial for uh, d over t10 and d over t20. And this is finally the validation study. Uh, we have some additional results which compare the uh, the effect of this approximation, the tolerable crank size, it's not in this work but uh, we can just enable it and I will send it the results. And this is a comparison between uh, for d over t15, um, um, a over t.2, no clad layer, and two levels of a mismatch, and it's a narrow uh, B group. You can see here that these, the um, uh, solid line is the every uh, um, uh, estimation using the equivalent stress strain uh, 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 method, and this is the finite element method. You can see here as the moment is increases, you can see that you have uh, some, some, some good uh, agreement here for uh, no clad layer. Um, um, this is undermatch and this is overmatch. And then we have for the, um, uh, with a two millimeter clad layer, again, uh, this is a narrow groove. Uh, you can see here that um, and the APRI, um is a little bit uh, non-conservative because probably to provide you a, a smaller driving force, but nevertheless it it's provides a reasonable uh, uh, estimation. And this is for the, the, result, the result results are for the wide group, again the same trend here. These are the finite element analysis and this is the approximation using a simplified approach. Again. Okay, so to conclude, so the equivalent stress strain uh, method provides a good approximation of the uh, crank driving force for the case analyzed. Um, the use of the appro an approximate lead load solution for, a, 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 for the joint analyzed uh, also provides a, a very good approximation, uh, uh, particularly in the, in the range of minus, uh, minus plus 20% uh, of this metric is probably more realistic within the range of the uh, pipeline industry, while the industry. Uh, also, the, the, the water group simplification also it's, it provides very good results for, again, for mismatch levels between uh, uh, minus and, and plus 20%. And that's another work. These are the uh, sponsors of the work. Thank you very much.